Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Joachim Topek from University of Rzeszów, from Poland. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we cannot meet, but I believe that this conference will contribute to a better understanding of the history, of our history, of our environment, and will allow us to draw the best conclusions for the future. First, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to perform on the conference and present a part of my research that I have covered for a few years. I prepared an animation about common rights in Austrian Galicia in the 19th century. Back in the Middle Ages, natural resources were the richness of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Forests, meadows, grazing lands and rivers were the basis of human existence and they formed essential fulfilment of basic human needs, such as shelter and warmth. Although nobility, clergy and the king owned vast estates, peasants were the largest beneficiaries of feedstock and forest products. They made use of rights called freedoms. Freedoms were the common rights of field and forest character. People collected much of their feedstock from forests, grazing lands and meadows in the common lands. The fall of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in the 18th century did not change this situation. Common rights remained in the territories under the rule of the Habsburg Empire, known as the Kingdom of Galicia and Lodomira, or just simply Galicia. At this time, common rights were known in the Polish language as servitute. Common rights were created in many different ways at the time of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Most frequently, the king or a nobleman owning a piece of land granted their subjects or clergymen certain laws. According to those laws, collecting natural products from the estate was allowed in a predetermined order. Nevertheless, granting their collection was not a special act, but a privilege, a last will, location acts, contracts and donations. Common rights varied tremendously. In most cases, they allowed the eligible people to collect forest products. They collected firewoods and timber for construction, along with foraging for forest products. In the 19th century, there were so-called free days. A free day was a day of the week when the king's subjects were permitted to enter the forests and collect a specific amount of feedstock. Another frequently used common right enabled peasants to feed cattle on the grazing lands. It gave way to allow domestic animals to graze for over 12 hours a day. An important common right was the possibility to graze cattle in manorial fields. Animals fed on acorns, beech nuts, grass bark, leaf forage and plant shoots. Construction timber was distributed on the basis of separate permits. It was used to build farm facilities as well as grazing land fences, hordes, tools, rural inventory and various facilities located near rivers and lakes such as passenger and freight ferries, canals, pavements, and road signs. In 1848, serfdom and the feudal system was abolished in Galicia. As a result, peasants were granted private land. However, Austrian authorities decided not to regulate common rights. Instead, uphold them until proper legal regulations were in place. The abolishment of serfdom deprived landowners of free labour. Therefore, they stopped respecting the rights of their subjects. As a result, it led to numerous protests and a conflict between peasants and manor owners. Subjects tried to seek justice at various levels, sometimes even using force. Therefore, conflicts turned into clashes with forest guards who are responsible for protecting forests and grazing lands from illegal entry. Numerous complaints were also sent to the local administration the central government in Vienna, and to the emperor. When such actions failed, people sought justice in courts. Accusations were also formed by landowners suing peasants over thefts and forest devastation. The emperor's decree issued in 1853 ruled that common rights had to be abolished and followed by compensations or special regulations. Even though the abolition of common rights was not officially approved, it did not happen at the demand of the disputing parties, so the process took a lot of time. 
when proper regulations were issued, common rights were gradually abolished, local common commissions were created, and their task was to recognise the rights of all people, from villages and parishes to cities, as well as to assess their size and value. The most important source of knowledge for commissioners were the former documents such as granting privileges and fiscal documents. Evidence was also attained by the interrogation of local communities representing various social groups and professions. They were peasants, townspeople, craftsmen, foresters and workers of the court administration before the testimony describing the functions of common rights. Each witness had to take an oath of truthfulness as well as introduce himself in short. My name is Franek Sukla. I am 72 years old. I am the father of eight children, and I live in Ocheka. I have not been judged or punished. The next step of local commissions was to draw up a list of people entitled to exercise their given right. The records contained the name and surname of the householder, along with their house number. Each document contained the signatures of representatives of villages or towns, with their respective seal. This documentation was extremely important from the point of view of the peasants, because it protected the rights of individual householders to participate in the final compensation. Another important point in the adjudicating of common rights cases were the technical issues. The appointed experts defined and described in the documents the dimension of each right, that was, the amount of feedstock collected in a year and its value. The inhabitants of the Turashufka community, as well as the two parts of the Dobieska and Pototska community, have the right to breed cattle such as cows and heifers, and also horses, together with the court cattle on the fallows and stubble fields. Later, in the presence of the commission, representatives of the court and the village or town community, the main protocol was drawn up. Both sides of the conflict could consent to the redemption or regulation of rights and form the compensation during the common meeting. One of the forms of compensation for the communities affected by the abolishment of common rights was to provide an appropriate amount of money, calculated on the basis of technical estimates. Another option was to provide the community a forest equivalent separated from the court forests. Such an area could become the property of the whole community or a group of people who had previously held common rights. In the case of ransoming and regulating the common rights of townspeople, local authorities and parishes, the most common agreement was reached. Then the final protocol was written, which the local commission submitted to the National Commission in Lviv for approval. After its acceptance, a judgment was published, which ended the whole process. Most often, however, during the work of the commission, there are a lot of different conflicts between the village and the court. The point of ignition was the very idea of ransoming rights, which the peasants did not accept, along with the technical estimates, the size and value of the rights, and the proposed amount of money or forest areas as compensation for the abolished right. Unhappy peasants, regardless of the abolition of common rights, sometimes tried to enforce the old right by force. Then there were acts of forest devastation and the theft of wood. Peasants and townspeople dissatisfied with the decisions of the commissions massively appealed the judgments of the Lviv authorities to the Interior Ministry in Vienna and the Imperial Court. Most appeals failed. The last option was to appeal to the emperor himself. Many inhabitants of the villages and cities in Galicia appealed to Franz Joseph I, who was commonly recognised as a good emperor and a defender of the peasants. Most illustrious lord and the most generous monarch, emperor and our father, we miserable and poor people on earth, as well as your loyal servants, dare to ask you for help in our insufferable complaint and unhappiness, as explained and given below. The conflict of the common rights were an inseparable part of political and socio-economic transformation in the Austrian Galicia in the second half of the 19th century. In most cases, the National Commission in Lviv recognised and confirmed the judgment recommended by the local commissions, regardless of the disputes.
and the lack of acceptance in the form of compensation. Municipalities were forced to accept the verdict. The direct and most significant consequence of activities of local commissions and the entire process of ransoming and regulating the common rights was the foundation of communal forests and land communities which have survived to modern times. Nowadays, communal forests used by individual villages and land communities arose through the separation of court forest or its purchase with funds transferred to the municipalities as compensation for abolished common rights. Thank you for your attention. Uh, to summarize, if you have any questions, any doubts, please write to me, write to my address mail, and I would like to wish you all the best. Uh, greetings from Poland. Bye-bye, see you soon.